the base in the U.S. of A. And uh, we welcome you across the nations. Thanks to those who have been what? Studying alongside us. And uh, thank you for pushing the word of God. And you are not pushing drugs, but you're pushing the word. That's good. There's so much junk. There's so much deceit out there. People are suffering. People are struggling. The word of God, truth, is what can get them out of their struggles. So if you receive it, please share it. Whenever it comes to your doorstep, take it, apply it, and share it with somebody. I'm a messenger of the Lord Jesus Christ, an agent of change and transformation. My delivery is quite unique. It's not the norm because I don't say things that are popular. I say what he who sent me wants me to say. So if anything I say does not uh, resonate with you or rubs you the wrong way, please, my intent is not to cause any offense. I'm here for you, not against you. Hallelujah. We're on the same team, so let's not fight. Amen. Amen. All right. So um, I want to talk about uh, briefly. It's a huge subject, but I'll do justice to it. Amen. I want to talk about the fact that we are able ministers of the new covenant. Amen. There are two covenants and people have missed these two covenants together and they are more ministering from the old rather than the new. So there's the old covenant and there's the new covenant. The old testament or new testament. So I read from um, Gen um, uh, Galatians. Hallelujah. Amen. Galatians Chapter 4, I'll read from verse 22. Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. From verse 22. Shall we all read? Read, please. For it is written that Abraham had two sons. That, uh, you are not hungry yet. It's not 12. Stop that. Stop that. Stop that. Stop that. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to hear your word. Sister birthday voice. Amen. Amen. Okay, so let's do it again. Read. For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bond woman, the other by a free woman. So what have we learned here? There's a guy called Abraham. And we know we all know Father Abraham, right? Okay. He's special. God chose him and decided to bless him. And we are we are we are now benefiting from the blessing or the covenant God cut with Abraham. Now, I want to say this. In this, in Abraham's case, God cut a covenant with Abraham directly. Mm -hmm. Directly. Between God and Abraham. Mm -hmm. All right? Amen. Now, we come under this covenant because Jesus Christ in Galatians, when we finish this, we'll go there. In fact, let's go there so people see. In Galatians 3, we'll come back to chapter 4. Galatians 3, let's go to verse 14. So, Jesus Christ, 13 please. Jesus Christ became a curse for us. Shall we read? Read. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. So Jesus became what? The curse for us. Where is that curse coming from? Disobedience to God, especially the Mosaic law. The Ten Commandments, together with the other small, small laws, ceremonial, civic, civil, whatever it is, 613 altogether. So Jesus became that curse because in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, the Bible says he came and he fulfilled the law. Like a prerequisites. If you're going to uh, uh, what, start a program, a course, whatever it is, they give you some kind of requirements that you have to meet before. So he fulfilled it. If it's fulfilled, just like uh, your account, it will, you'll be told, pay in full. As a matter of fact, it happened to me, I called to pay a medical bill. And then, uh, they said, hold a second. I knew I was, uh, what, there was a balance of $100. Then um, the person came back, he said, mm -mm, there's nothing. I said, what happened? He said, well, the insurance uh, paid, you know, the balance. I said, how much did the insurance pay? I wanted to be sure they're ripping me off or not. Because it was 100. Then she came back and said, insurance pay $72. So then what happened to her? <laughs> it's 72. And then it's wiped off. So your balance is zero. You have nothing. Okay. You see, because the balance was taken care of, in the same way, Jesus took care of the law. He fulfilled it. 
he met the requirements. He blessed. God was blessed. He was at peace. Because Jesus was fulfilling. No man could ever do it. But he did it. Hallelujah. So, in so doing, he became, as it were, even a curse. Because curse is everyone who hangs on the tree. He took a place of judgment, a place of condemnation, a place of the penalty of sin, which is what? Death. So that you and I, when we believe in his finished work, we become free. That we become sons or children of God. Amen. So if you are in Christ Jesus, if you have accepted Jesus Christ as the Messiah, according to Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So you are saved. Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. So whoever does that is okay. Amen. Notice that I'm giving you two scriptures. Romans 10, 9 and 10. John 10, sorry, John 3, 16. There's no law referred to in these verses. Did you realize that? Then say amen. Come on, say amen. amen. Should I go back and say them again? Should I go back and say them again? You see, brother, Ed is here. Should I go back and say it again? Yes. Okay. So Romans 10, 9 says, if you believe, if you conf sorry, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, that's conviction, persuasion. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. Moses is not mentioned. Even though he was on the mount and then he received the Ten Commandments. That was the order of the day. This time it's not the Ten Commandments. He say if you confess that Moses was sent by God. If you confess that Moses really delivered the people of Israel. He say if you confess that Moses really received the Ten Commandments. He didn't say that. Why am I stressing these things? Because there are a lot of folks there, ministers, who don't mean evil, but they are off. Because they are teaching things that they have no business teaching. And taking people back into bondage. Jesus came to free us from the bondage of the law. Amen. But in some teachings, they are taking people back into bondage. So you have denominations that say these are our policies. This is what we believe. This is what we stand for. They read some portions of the Bible. Some portions, they don't believe in it. And I can go on and say all that, but I don't have a short time. So that's Jesus. He has uh, what? He, he redeemed us from the curse of the Lord. Amen. So whatever is to be dished out to us, because at that time, God was counting sins. He was taking account, computing. You have sinned, you've sinned, you've sinned, you've sinned. Sin. This is a judgment that is going to come upon you. But Jesus took the judgment. Amen. So Bible says in Romans 8.1, Therefore there is no, now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. When you accept Jesus Christ, Hallelujah. your sins, God doesn't remember yes. anymore. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says, go ahead, that's a good place to put your hands together. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says that God has what? Delivered us. It's not going to deliver but those who are believing in Jesus Christ will be delivered from the kingdom of where? Darkness. And we will be conveyed into the kingdom of his dear son. That is Jesus Christ. That is uh, Colossians chapter 1, 13. You've been delivered. You are in a different kingdom. So you have to understand you are in a different kingdom. And why I'm stressing on kingdom, you are going to understand that. Because even though people are saved, they are born again, genuinely, they are confused by the different kind of... Uh, Heresy, heretic kind of teachings that they are receiving, wrong doctrines. People, some ministers are so creating and making people followers of Moses instead of Jesus Christ. Okay, let's read on 14. Let's read, read that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. Did, do we remember what we read before? What did Jesus do for us? Class. What did Jesus do for us in the verse 13 verse? What did he do for us? You see this right here? A lot of people are not used to this kind of delivery. 
they are used to, hey, and there was a, a, there was an ark. And God told uh, Noah, mm -hmm. and when Noah built the ark, and, and so what? He built the ark, and he told the people to go in, and then what? What is the application? How does that help in your life, in your marriage, in your relationship with people? That's what is going on. So this is unique. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> and people don't even uh, uh, expect to be asked questions. So it's unique. Hallelujah. But I want the truth to be grounded in our hearts. To be mari marinated. That's why repetition is one of the ways to learn. So what do we learn in the 13th verse? We've been redeemed from the curse of the law. What is the reason? That's what we are reading now. Do you get it? So now let's read with confidence. Read that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. Hold it. That's also key. That is say in Moses. Your favorite prophet, Elijah. People say Elijah brought fire. <laughs> they like Elijah because the Messiah who called fire from heaven. But it says in Christ Jesus. That is key. I don't understand how people read some things and they miss it. Under the new covenant, everything starts with Jesus Amen. and ends with Jesus. Amen. Everything, I'll say that again, everything starts with Jesus yeah. and ends with Jesus. Amen. If there's life, Jesus is life. Amen. If there's life, life comes from Jesus. Amen. It doesn't come from the law. It doesn't come from the mosaic. It comes from Jesus. Amen. That's why it says in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and what? The life. In John 1, 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In chapter of, and verse 4, it says, In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. When you come to 14, verse 14, the Bible says, The Word became what? Flesh, and dwelt amongst us. Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We are talking about Jesus Christ. The, the law is not mentioned of. Hallelujah. Moses. You know, I'm called Samuel. And then, uh, to me, Samuel is the greatest prophet. He was the first uh, prophet and the judge in the Old Testament. But he's not even mentioned. Daniel is not mentioned. Moses is not mentioned. It's Jesus Christ. It's Jesus Christ. Who died for us in the first place? Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. If you are in a dark place or you are stuck in a place and somebody comes to leave you uh, out of the place. Who do you follow? Mm -hmm. <laughs> do you follow the one who is leading you out? Or you say, no, 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 no. You call me so and so. I want him to come here then I'm going to follow that person. Mm -hmm. Is my point clear? Mm -hmm. So he's the one who took us out. Mm -hmm. He's the one that we follow. Because it says, so you see, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon us, the Gentiles, Amen. in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. That is why we have received the blessing. Amen. Jesus Christ, in his death, confirm and seal this blessing of God, this covenant. Amen. When you read the Bible, it says that this covenant cannot be nullified. Why? Because it took the blood of Jesus Christ to confirm it, and to seal it. And there's no greater than God who swear by he swore by himself. By two immutable one. It's impossible for God to lie. God cannot lie. If you read your titles that we were reading, you would have, you would have seen it there. That God cannot lie. Hallelujah. It's all about Jesus Christ. It started with the cross. His death on the cross. That's how we started. But don't get stuck on the cross. Amen. Because he died for some benefits. Amen. The cross was just a starting point. And this is what people miss. And here I can't help but say some things. Instead of trusting the word of God, that talks about how powerful the blood is. Now they have put their trust, their confidence, their faith in elements. I'll say something that will shake you, it will rock your world, it will change your perception of how you treat elements. It was God himself who told the people of Israel, he instructed them, the Jews in the land of Egypt, that tonight 
I'll be striking the first one of uh, the land. Therefore, slaughter a lamb for each household, and then mark the well, doorpost with what? The blood. And it says, when I see the blood, I'll pass over. Amen. And so Jews up to today, it's a memorial. They celebrate Passover. Yeah. All right? Yeah. For we Christians, according to Corinthians, Jesus became our Passover. Amen. That's what I have to say. Hallelujah. See, what happened was a type of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Behold, the Lamb of the world that takes away the sin That's of the world. Right. So that was a time. That blood wasn't that precious like the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah. That blood was inferior to the blood of Jesus Christ. That blood was only for a season, but the blood of Jesus Christ is eternal. The power in the blood of Jesus Christ is eternal. It still saves today. The blood of that animal that is sacrificed in the land of Egypt was just for that specific night. It couldn't protect them. It was just for that specific night. But the blood of Jesus Continues to protect, continues to protect, continues to preserve, Amen. continues to supply life, and life, and life eternal. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So just as they were, they marked their doorposts, here, spiritually, I want you to understand. We didn't have the blood in our hand, the blood of Jesus, to mark our foreheads, to mark our doorposts, and mark our windows, and what have you. Some people smear oil in their person. Stop that. You are messing up whatever you have. Stop that. I mean, your face looks gorgeous, and then you smear oil on your face and all that. Stop that. You, you, you are smearing oil on your dollar bill and everywhere. And people are so, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. People are so foolish. They think that when they mark their doorpost with oil, then they are protected. That's what I'm talking about. You see, you've shifted. You are now an idol, idol worshiper. Because you shifted your confidence from God, Jesus Christ, who shed his blood to protect you, to something that somebody created to protect you. Image. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Our confidence is in what is intangible, spiritual. The word of God is intangible. Right. You can't take hold of it like this, hold it. It's not perceptible to touch. That's what I'm trying to say. You can't see the word of hey, and then the word of God goes. No. He's wearing this color. No, you can see it. You know, so God wants our faith to be in the supernatural, that which is intangible. But as physical and fleshy, carnal as we are, we always want something that we can see in the natural so we can learn. And that's why a lot of people have missed it. Part of our calling is to restore or is to raise new covenant what? ministers. We are not ministers of the old covenant. God didn't call me to talk about Moses, to preach about Moses and the law. That's why I've not asked you to recite the Ten Commandments. Well. I don't even talk about the Ten Commandments unless it's related to what I'm teaching you, like what I'm doing now, but I don't have time to go there. Like I've been telling you, we have higher standards under the new what? covenant. Because in the old covenant, for instance, I'm giving you two, and then I'll move on. Hallelujah. Amen. Just two. It says, Thou shalt not commit what? Adultery. You shall not commit adultery. In the New Testament, under the New Covenant, looking at a woman lastfully, you've not physically gone to bed with a woman, but Jesus Christ, his own words, he said what? You've committed what? Adultery. Okay, now that you are continue, you see the way you are helping me to preach. Good. Where can we find it? Where? Where does it say so? You said Jesus Christ said it. So you meet somebody outside and said, Oh, we have a higher standard. And under, you know, under the new covenant, you know, if you look at the woman last week, Jesus, the master himself said it. You sin, you committed what adultery. Then he said, Where is it? Oh, and then you need to scratch it. Oh, I know it's in the book, it's somewhere, but just that I don't remember. You have to know these things because these are the things that you learn. These are your values. The word of God is your standard for life. You have to. Hallelujah. Know them. So if I tell you where it is, everybody, I'm going to pull out $20 bill. It's mine for the ticket. What? <laughs> so you don't want me to have the $20. <laughs> where it is? Matthew what? 
28. Yes, Matthew 5, 28. Then Jesus talk about a lot of things. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, I'll give you another standard. That is so high. We read under the Old Testament, it said that love God with all your mind, soul, and all that. Then love your neighbor as yourself. That is a, a low standard. Under the new covenant, we have a higher standard. Who can tell me that? Who can tell me that? We are, we are grappling with that. We are struggling. We have not come there yet. And a lot of preachers are not teaching this. Huh? Hmm. See now what they are doing. It says, it says, my a new commandment I give to you. Hmm? Love one another. And love them as I have loved you. That's the higher standard. Oh, I didn't hear that. Man, but I'm not giving you twenty dollars. I help you out. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Right. So you see, here Jesus said, This is the standard. Right. The way I want you to love people mm -hmm. is the way I have loved them. The way I love, God has His way of doing things. Yeah. We have our way of doing things. Yeah. And God wants us to come into His way of doing things because His ways are higher than what? Our ways. And Proverbs 14 12 precisely says that there is a way that seems right to a man, but the end of that way leads to death. So at times, we stick to our ways and we do it. And then we say, I've been worshiping God. I've been going to church 10 years now. You know, I'm the first. So the door is open. I'm there. I, I, I even help the usher to open the door. I help the usher to clean. I help the And yes, nothing is going on. No, but you know in your heart that you believe the lie. Because Jesus says, if you hear the word and you don't do it, you're like a foolish person, stupid person, Amplified says. And actually, stupid is the right, you know, rendition. You see, you hear the word, you don't do it. That's some Christians, that's what they do. They hear the word, they don't do it. They think their opinion is better than God's word. Then they get into trouble. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Why do I say these things? I want you to receive the transformation that God wants you to receive. Amen. And then you can have that good life that Jesus died for. He laid down his life so you have this good life. Take advantage of it. Amen. He makes a place to Put your hands together and say amen. Hallelujah. Oh, wow. Okay, so let's go back. We are called to help people amen. come into this new covenant ministry. Hallelujah. That's why we have uh, the ministerial network. We have a ministerial network. We are helping pastors everywhere, especially the young, you know, the young upcoming ones. Because some of these senior pastors, they are full of it. They are very arrogant. It's true. You, you see, Paul says, some of you say, wow, this guy can't believe you saying that. That's an object. That's an object. We are speaking old English. Mm. <laughs> I have to judge based on the word of God. I have to judge people's moves, their actions, their conduct. Because Paul even said, man, those who cause confusion in the body, avoid them. If I don't judge, how do I manage this? How do I know them? How do I avoid them? I mean, in the church of Corinth, it was so serious that Paul said, those who even are fornicating, those who are committing, what was the name? What's the name? Incest. He said, don't keep company with these ones. If they are not judging based on the word of God, they can come to that. Hallelujah. Okay. Have I, have I exceeded 15 minutes? Oh, the 15 minutes up. Okay, just give me five minutes. Hallelujah. So now let's let's go back to what we're reading. Two covenants. Um, um, Galatians 4. Hagar, God didn't promise that Hagar is the one that's going to give birth to the what, uh, seed of the, uh, the uh, Isaac. Yeah. All right? We all know that. Because I don't want to bore you. Let me read that quickly. Since it came out, let me read that quickly. So we are in uh, Galatians chapter 4. Let's start from uh, the... Where do we start from? Yeah, 22. So let's go to 23. And he who was of the bond woman was born according to the flesh. Don't forget that. I uh, What's the name? Ishmael was born according to the flesh. And he of the free woman through promise, like I was saying. So God promised um, Sarah, promised Abraham that the son of the slave wife was born in a human attempt to bring about the fulfillment of God's promise. And that's what we do at times. Instead of sticking to God's way, so we will have fulfillment of what He wants us to have. We want to do our own thing. For instance, believing in the oil and putting it on your doorpost. 
the thing you are protected. Besides, the moment I become your God, I'm your protection. Amen. I'm your protector. Amen. You don't need your oil to protect you. Because he marked you with the blood of Jesus for life. Amen. And not for destruction, Amen. but for prosperity. Hallelujah. And people say, I plead the blood, I plead the blood. No. Once, when the blood is applied, it's on. It works forever. Amen. You have to walk in the consciousness of it. The blood gives you covering, the blood of Jesus Christ. That's it. Hallelujah. All right, so it says, But the son of the freeborn wife was born as God's own fulfillment of his uh, promise. 25. I read, For this Hagar is Mount Sana in Arabia. So the first of com uh, commandment, the New Testament, that's where it came from. Sana or Sana. Hallelujah. And it corresponds to Jerusalem, which now is and is in, is in what? Bondage with her what? Children is in bondage. But Jerusalem above is what? Free, which is what? The mother of us all. Do you get it? And then he goes on to it. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. Hallelujah. I don't have time, so I can't continue. So I want to add this. Because I have to stop. Hallelujah. As important as the law was, I want you to realize this. When Jesus showed up, what was he preaching? Mark chapter 1. Look at verse 4. Mark chapter 1. The Bible says, John came baptizing in the wilderness and preaching a baptism of what? Repentance for the remission of sins. Alright? Now, what was Jesus preaching? Preaching. 14. Hallelujah. Now, after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee preaching what? What was he preaching? What was he preaching? What was he preaching? Ten Commandments? Mosaic Law? No. Because something has changed. And if Jesus brought about the change, Jesus who laid down his life for us, why do we want to go back? And teach those things that we have no business teaching. Does it mean we don't have respect for him or we have no understanding? Hallelujah. Amen. So, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying that time is fulfilled, 15, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Repent and believe in the gospel. Gospel is message, the gospel is news. Hallelujah. Amen. So he brought good news. He brought a new message. So he's saying, change. Have a change of heart. Have a change of mind. Move away from the mosaic. Move away from the Ten Commandments. Move away from the law. Because there's no life in the law. Now life is here. Believe in me. Amen. That was it. Do you get it? Yes. That was it. Change. Look at 39, verse 39. Hallelujah. I don't know why some people make it so hard. And he was preaching in the synagogues throughout all Galilee and casting out what? Demons. What was he preaching? The law? No, the gospel. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's what we have. Look, Amen. think about the disciples. What did he teach Peter that he called? John, James, and the rest. What did he teach them? Judaism? No. Mosaic? No. He taught them about himself and the kingdom of God. Because we move from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of the son. Now we are family with God. And he was teaching them that. He was teaching them the message that he brought. That's why he said in Matthew 28, verse 18 following, he says, especially 20, he says that what? Go and what? Teaching, go make disciples of all nations. Teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. That's it. For those who don't know this, let me go to second, second um, what's the name? Second uh, Corinthians of the three. I want to round it. I want to round it so it's only like a half big kind of thing. So second Corinthians of the three, let's look at verse five. Verse five says, Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves. God is our source. But our sufficiency is from God. Amen. The word sufficiency or sufficient means ability. 
Hallelujah. Something that is inherent. Amen. Amen. It's God who has made us what? Able. Amen. Amen. Okay. So it's within us. Let's move on. Six. Who also made us sufficient what? Made us sufficient as ministers of what? The old covenant? The old covenant? New covenant? That's my point right there. He didn't make people ministers of the old. So when you listen to pastors and they are so into the Old Testament, you watch what they teach to put people in bondage the way they teach it. They are saying for you to do things that then related to those that were being spoken to at that time and it's over. It doesn't relate to you. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. That is why they pray prayers like, may God bless you. May God uh, what? give you favor. You see? But under the New Testament, the New Covenant, we are highly favored. Amen. So you know you have favor. Why? Because you are a joint heir with Jesus Christ. That's right. Amen. You are in his kingdom. Yes. So he has favored you. Amen. So you have to thank him for favor. Amen. You don't go out and pray, may God favor you this year. That's no prayer. It's religious calisthenics. Mm -hmm. If you don't like calisthenics, it's gymnastics. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. It's religious thing. And people are following it. It's a no, no. Don't do that, please. Mm -hmm. And stop the me, me, me. When you know God has favored you, yeah. and don't go and pray for you, may God protect you. Mm -hmm. That's nonsense. May God protect you. Oh. He took me out from the kingdom of darkness okay. into his kingdom. Is he not protecting me? The angels are on guard. May God protect you. You see, we've done this a cliche. We said it over and over. Oh, God bless you. God bless you. God. So we are always say, God bless you. God bless you. Learn to say you are blessed. Instead of God bless you, God bless you. What is he going to bless you with? Houses. Anyway, I want I need a mansion. I want a mansion. My dream home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That was a joke. You guys didn't laugh. Didn't that's, that's not fine. Okay, so he's made us that way, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter what? Kills, but the spirit gives life. Now, I'm done. Seven. Let's read it. It says, but in the ministry of death, what is the ministry of death? It's right there. Written and engraved on souls, Ten Commandments, was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not Look steadily at the face of Moses because of the what? glory of his countenance, which glory was what? Passing away. Yeah. Yesterday I was talking to the uh, pastor about this. Someone was saying, you know, God, show us your glory. Show us your glory. Pastors who keep praying and then telling people to pray, show us your glory, they are off. You see, they are reading Old Testament. They will take you to Exodus. Moses prayed and says, show us your glory. If Jesus is in your life, what glory do you mean? The, the guy, the Lord of glory is, in, is, is living in you. You become a tabernacle. You house the glory. Then you pray, show me your glory. Help is within you. Power of the Holy Spirit. He said you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. So the power is within you. You have to be taught how to tap into that power. You have to be taught how to access that power, how to work with that power, how to use that power, to know how that power functions. Hallelujah. And that's a key thing. So wrong, a lot of wrong teachings out there. So it calls the old covenant ministry of death. Then if that is not enough, uh, it says, will he, uh, now, how will the ministry of the Spirit now, uh, not be more glorious? Mm -hmm. Then look at none. For if the ministry of condemnation had glory, mm -hmm. you see, he's calling that Moses' ministry, mm -hmm. ministry of condemnation. Mm -hmm. That's why pastors who are in the old covenant, they are still preaching condemnation. Mm -hmm. And you don't pray enough. You should be praying. You don't come to church enough. When the church doors are open, you are home. You are always eating. You don't fast enough. Because all their faith is in their fasting. They think you have to fast to show yourself humble before God. I'll leave that alone. Able ministers. Somebody who said this, he was speaking to what? People who were ministers. But everyone, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18, it says that. 
God was in Christ reconciling men to himself. And he's giving us the ministry of what? Please, please put it there. Second Corinthians 5, 18. He's giving us the ministry of reconciliation. Amen. He's giving us the ministry of reconciliation. Every one of them. Ministry of reconciliation. Yes. I used to, when uh, my teenagers, when I used to preach, go, oh, you are smoking, you go to hell. You are drinking, you go to hell. You are doing this, you go to hell. No. What takes you go to hell is not knowing Jesus. Rejecting Jesus as the Messiah. Yeah. We go and preach things that we have no business preaching. And people feel so condemned. They don't even want to be part of the church. God is not carrying a baseball bat looking for you to hit you. God is not doing that. It's the goodness of the Lord that leads to repentance. Hallelujah. He died. He's already died. And then 18. He says he's giving us the message of what? Reconciliation. The message of reconciliation. You see what we are we are to go and preach. Message of what? Reconciliation. God is in Christ bringing people to himself. Just tell people, God is not counting their trespass against them anymore. God, Jesus said, he's forgiving them. They have to come into life. That's how simple Amen. it is. Amen. This is what we are doing. Bringing people into what? New covenant ministry. Yes. Present truth. According to 2 Peter 1, 12. Present truth. There's life in that. Jesus said, the words that I speak to you their life and their own spirit. In Hebrews 1 11 says, In God, God in sundry times, many uh, ways spoke to us through the prophets. Verse 2 In these last days, He's spoken to us through His Son. That's the one we have to follow. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's the one we follow. Amen. Not any other thing. Amen. 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 We are dead to the law. Yes. We are married Lord. to Christ. Amen. We are not under law. We are under grace. Yes. Shall we rise? That, that's it for this afternoon. And I charge you with the words in Galatians chapter 5, verse 1 and 13. Stand firm in the liberty well with Jesus, the anointed one, has made you free. And do not again be entangled with the yoke of bondage, but by love, serve one another. We are ministers of the new covenant. Can you say that? I am a minister of the new covenant. Hallelujah. Thank you all. Love you guys.